Hello everyone. In this video, I will be showing you how to create a wing using SolidWorks that you'll be able to use for your project to calculate for the surface area. So first things first, here I have my SolidWorks opened and I'm just going to go ahead and change my units so they're corresponding to what I want. In this case, to be feet. Before I begin to draw anything, I want to go over the wing layout for a tapered wing. Here I have created the wing layout design for my tapered wing, where I have the root cord and the tip cord respectively, as well as the taper ratio, which is defined by the tip cord divided by the root cord, as well as the span here, because I'm showing half of the wing, I've defined the span as B over two, which is half of the span. Here is the sweep angle. So the sweep angle is located at the quarter cord line, which respectively is 25% of the root cord and 25% of the tip cord. The values that I will be using are a taper ratio of 0.3, a tip cord of 6.6 .6 feet, a root cord of 22 feet, a span of 120 feet, and a sweep angle of 25 degrees. The sweep angle is taken with respect to this horizontal line and it is located accordingly to the quarter cord line. Now I will be showing my front plane, top plane. So what I'm doing is using the right click on my mouse to show all of my planes. Okay, now that we can see all our planes, in order to recreate that sketch, I'm actually going to be working in the top plane. So I'm just going to look normal to the top plane. I'm just going to hide these now. And I am going to insert a sketch. So by right clicking my mouse and then clicking on sketch, now we see that we have a sketch open. So I'm just going to start off by making a center line. And now I'm going to make a line on the center. And I'm going to dimension this line using the smart dimension to correspond to root cord. So it's 22 feet. All right. We can close that. Now I'm just going to create another center line. I like to use center lines as a way to guide myself when I make a sketch. So now I'm going to smart dimension the center line to be the half span. So in this case, that is 60 feet. And now I'm going to be creating my sweep. So as you recall, I'm going to make a point here. I'm going to use the Smart Dimension tool to place my point as far away as I want it. So if you recall, this is going to be our quarter cord line guide. So it's taking 25% of 22, which in this case would give us 0.5 feet. I'm going to draw another center line up here. So now I can use this information along with our sweep angle to draw our swept line. So what I'm going to be doing now is just drawing a line. And in order to dimension this line, all I'm going to use is our smart dimension. Making sure this is 25. So now that I've drawn my swept line, I can insert another line. 
And recall, this is the quarter chord location. So we can use this knowledge to then create the space between the start of the tip chord and the quarter chord line. So if I mark dimension here, you should remember that the tip chord was 6.6 .6 feet long and we should be taking 25% of that. And that leaves us with 1.65 feet. And now I'm just gonna save that. And now we have the distance that these two points should be apart. And now this point can be saved as the beginning of our tip chord. So I'm just gonna make a line and I'm gonna dimension our line to be 6.6 .6 feet for our tip chord. And I'm just gonna use a line to connect the points. And as you can see, we have a closed wing. And now that I have finished drawing my sketch on the top plane, I will hit exit. And from we can see, now we have all our defining parameters and we can use this guide to then help us insert our airfoils and place them in their appropriate locations. Now, in order to prepare for the airfoils that I will be doing, if we go ahead and look at front plane and the top plane intersect. So when inserting our airfoil coordinates, we're able to create one here. However, we also have to create another plane such that we can insert the airfoil coordinates at this location. So in order to do so, I'm gonna be inserting another plane that's parallel to the front plane and it's located at this distance. I'm gonna be selecting the front plane, clicking in our features, reference plane. As you can see, now we have this new plane. Now the offset is gonna be at the half span. So it's 60 feet. And as you can see, it automatically makes the new plane offset 60 feet. However, if we can see it's in the wrong direction, but we can easily change that by clicking flip offset. And now it is in the correct position. So I'm gonna save. And I'm just gonna rename this plane tip cord plane. And now that we've created another plane, we are ready to proceed with the next portion. I want to show you two databases that you can use to obtain the airfoil coordinates that you'll be using in your wing model. So the first one is airfoil tools. And as you can see, you can look up different types of airfoils or vehicles, as well as the NACA series that you've been learning in class is also available for you to look at. Another one is the UIUC airfoil coordinates database. So this one's a little bit more extensive than the airfoil tools. And actually, a lot of the airfoils that you'll find on airfoil tools obtain their data from this site. So this is just another more elaborate tool database that you can use. And the one I'm going to be looking at is Boeing 103 airfoil. So all I'm going to do is click the source dat file. You can see it gives me the airfoil coordinates. So if you recall the way the airfoil coordinates are done is from values ranging from zero to one. So the scale is of one. So you'll have to fix that once we are in the solid works so that it is scaled to our tip and our root chord. And I'm gonna be going over that section once we're there. Now, I want you to pay attention how there's two different types of columns here. So that just notes a top and a bottom portion of your airfoil. You need both of these and for these sections that have two, all you have to do is reorganize it a little bit so that your airfoil coordinates flow. Whereas you'll find others such as this NACA 2415 where there is no space. So this is ready to go pretty much as is. 
Um, you don't have to worry about sorting through it, but because I want you to see how to, you would do it with a little more complex case, I'll be showing you how to do it for the Boeing 103 airfoil. So the first thing that I have to do is I'm just gonna copy my airfoil coordinates into a text file, just like that. Now I'm just going to save it as airfoil coordinates. And I can close this now and I'm gonna open it in an Excel file. So I'm gonna click file, open, and then just note that here we are at currently all Excel files. So I'm gonna click all files and we have our airfoil coordinates. You can open it. Now, in order to import our text file in the correct formatting, we're gonna to have to be using a delimiter. So that'll help us to import it as two separate columns as opposed to just copying and pasting it into a single column where both columns will be contained in one. So what I'm gonna be doing now is that we have delimiter, click next. So we can see that they're separated by a space. So I'm gonna click space. And as you can see, it is now already made them into separate columns. So I'm gonna click next and just finish. So now we've imported our data. And what I'm gonna be doing is just removing this data here. And we have both of our sections and I'm just gonna be deleting extra space. And now if you notice, SOLIDWORKS takes X, Y, and Z coordinates. So that's the reason why I'm importing it into an X file. We actually need to create a column of zeros in order for it to be read as X, Y, and Z coordinates. If we go back to our SOLIDWORKS, we can see that we want our airfoil to be in the front plane. So what I want to do is insert this column of zeros in our third column. Depending on the plane where you want your airfoil coordinates to be is the column that you'll be using as your zero column. So I'm going to be using it as my Z column. So I'll be putting my zeros in this column. I want all of my data to have the same amount of decimal places. So I'm just going to go and select my data, go to format, format cells, number, number of decimal places. And I'll just be using four, hitting okay. Now that all of our columns have the same number of decimal places, we can proceed with the next step. So if we take a quick look back at the NACA 2415, the way that data is sorted is it starts with one and it goes all the way through its positive case and then it hits zero and it goes back to its negative. And the way our data is currently sorted, it goes from zero to one and then it goes into the negative portion of it until it goes to one. So we need to fix that and sort it so it looks similar to the first case. So I'm gonna be using the sort and filter now for the purposes of sorting, I'm actually going to highlight this data here and I'm just gonna copy it to a different column. And the reason I'm gonna be do that is because I want to sort just the top portion. So I'm just gonna sort these columns. So I'm gonna click column A, sort and filter, go to custom sort, and the reason why I want custom sort is because I want to be able to do expand the selection. And what this allows me to do is sort column A, but while it sorts this column, it also sorts B and C according to A. So if I were to put 0 0.0125 at the very bottom, the numbers corresponding to it, which in this case is 0 0.0266 and 0 would also follow along. So I'm going to click expand the selection and now it's highlighted the rest of my data. And I want to sort by column A. I want to sort cell values and I want to sort from largest to smallest. Hit okay. And all my data has been sorted. And as you can see, we have this line of zeros in both of our data sets. So I'm not gonna include this into our new set. So I'm just gonna highlight here. Now you can see it ranges from one to one and our values go from 
our positive values into our 0, 0 and into our negative. I'm going to save this as a text file labeled SolidWorks Airflow Coordinates. So I'm going to click Save. And now I'm going to close it. And it's important that you close it so that there's no errors when trying to import it into SolidWorks. So now we're ready to proceed with the SolidWorks portion. So I'm just going to go to Features, Curves, and I can click Curve through XYZ points. Now I can browse for my text file. So I have to change the default setting from curves to text file so that we can see the text file that we just created. I'm gonna click this one, I'm gonna hit open, and you know it's imported correctly because you'll see a general layout for what your airflow should look like. So now I can just click okay. Now we can see our airflow has been imported and we can see it here that it's a curve. Now I'm going to zoom in just to show you what happens when you import it directly. So as you can see, the trailing edge is open and this is going to be a problem if we don't close it. So we're gonna to have to go ahead and do that before we can focus on resizing it for the purposes of creating our wing here. So what I'm gonna be doing is inserting a sketch in our front plane. So I'm gonna insert sketch. As you can see, now we have this sketch. Now I'm going to convert entities. So that's going to convert our airfoil coordinates from being a curve into a sketch that we can then work with. And now it allows us to see two points here. So now what I'm going to do is use the line to create two lines to close it off. And what I like to do is make these lines tangent to the curves, selecting one of the lines that we just created, holding control, and then selecting the curve. And this will allow us to create these existing relations. So I want this to be tangent to each other. So I'm just gonna create a tangent relationship. I'm gonna do the same with this one. So I'm gonna select our line, hold control, select our curve. And now I'm gonna Click tangent. Now we've closed off this edge and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off this axis. So I'm going to trim entities and I'm just gonna trim this excess. So if we look at our airflow, now we have a solid shape. Now, before we continue, I just wanna draw your attention how we've created two additional lines here to try and close this trailing edge. However, this could cause a problem when trying to loft two different surfaces that have different connecting points. So in order to try and help mitigate that error in the future, what I'm gonna be doing is try to make a spline that connects all of these points in a single curve. So I'm gonna select my spline and my two tangent lines. Then I'm gonna to go to tools, spline tools and fit spline. And as you can see, this has created a spline that attempts to connect all of my three lines. And I can lower the tolerance to try and make this as close to this leading edge as possible. So I'm just gonna call that good and save. And now I can just go ahead and trim away these extra entities. And now what we're left with is a solid spline. So now what I'm going to be doing is resizing this airfoil such that the size corresponds to the cross section of our root cord. So what I'm going to be doing is just making sure that my spline is selected. Then I'm going to go to move entities. And as you see, it gives us the option to scale entities. And I'm going to be scaling about the origin for this case. And then it gives us the option to scale. So if you recall, our airflow coordinates are scaled to one and my root cord was set at 22. So I'm just gonna use 22, click okay. And as you can see, now we have our scaled 
wing. And if we compare it to our sketch, that's what it will look like. So now we have our root chord. So I'm just going to exit my sketch and I'm going to rename this as root chord. So now that I have my root chord, I can repeat the same process for my tip chord plane. So I'm just going to be selecting my tip chord plane, inserting a sketch. And again, clicking the curve, convert entities. You can see now we have our airfoil section in our tip cord. So I'm just going to repeat the same process that I did with the front plane to make my root cord to make my tip cord. Now that I've created my airfoil and I've trimmed my entities and used the spline, what I'm going to be doing is setting it to its appropriate location. So remember, we set our tip cord to be over here. So you can select your spline. So I'm going to select move entities. And then the starting point is our X. And I'm just going to be zooming out. and then clicking my new point. So now that I moved it, I can go about resizing it in the same way that I resized the root cord. So as you can see, I have my root cord and my tip cord airfoil sections. And what I can do now is loft a surface to help connect both of these. So what I'm gonna be doing is just hiding my sketch since we don't really need that right now. Also gonna be hiding the curve that we have so that we can clearly see the root and tip cord. So I'm gonna go to surfaces, lofted surface, and I'm just gonna be using my tree here to select the root cord and my tip cord. And as you can see, now we have a surface that's trying to connect both of these together. And I'm just gonna rotate that so you can see. And I'd recommend just quickly looking at it to see that it doesn't bend in any sort of weird way. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna click OK. And now we've created a wing by lofting our tip and our root cord together. Now, if you wanted to create your full wing, you could always mirror this across. So all that's left to do now is just to make sure that this edge is nice and closed. So I'm just gonna be selecting it and using this filled surface tool to just go ahead and fill in my surface. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And now, as you can see, both of my surfaces have been filled and you have created your wing. For your project, you'll be required to use the surface area of the wing that you created. And in order to find that, it's pretty simple. You just go to evaluate, measure. You can click on your wing and you'll see the surface area of my lofted wing is 1,774.29 feet squared. And this is a number that I can use to proceed with the project.